Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, this is Alex. I'm in bright red letters. And this is the Ramble. That's in the white letters. And we're here. Yeah, until midnight tonight. Out we go to Las Wages, Nevada. How are you? Hello doing? from Las Wages, Nevada. Yeah, that's the You know, if you want to make your money you're coming off the plane, when you get off the plane, you walk into the propeller. Yeah, that's great. Boy, you know, your audio always sucks, but we put up with it because we put up with you. Oh, you can do. Yeah. So yeah. you can, so so, can put up with Larry Brown, who doesn't even have video. You can put up with this. <laughs> but at least his sound is good. <laughs> at least. Yeah, that's a sketch connected to his thing. Your picture is beautiful, by the way. It's just beautiful gorgeous. Picture. <clears throat> Man, I'm coughing. Look, well, show us around the room there. What's there? You got a cat? A Where's a cat? Any cats? Water's over there. No. Oh, there we go. Oh, there. Yeah. Oh, oh good. tired kitty. We're boring him. Hmm? We're boring him. <laughs> cats, when they when they yawn, really look like they're enjoying yawning. Yeah. You, you know? Oh, by the way, you know what I forgot to do here? I always forget to do something. Look at that. Now you can see me better, folks. Oh, you're glowing. Look at that. I turned on the lights. I forget to turn on the lights. I forget to turn on a lot of things. Your age, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, it's just, it's getting worse and worse every time. Yeah. Uh, uh, during the day, uh, we record this during the day, and during the day there's a lot of light coming in from the outside, so I don't uh -huh. notice that I don't have the light on, see? So, you know, it's, but this makes me look, what? You look 19. Do I look 19? Does it take uh, 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 70 years off my life? <laughs> oh, boy. So uh, how have you been doing? Will you quit playing with the phone? You do this all the time. And now you... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Don't touch it. Just don't... You there? Don't touch it. Don't... Don't touch it. Hello? Yeah, why are you touching it? It goes, oh, it, it just, it just, when the phone rang, when the phone rings, the picture goes off. Oh, boy. It's a scam likely call. That's all I get in the morning. I get hundreds of those. I wonder if there's some way we could turn that off so that it won't, uh, what I don't know how to turn off the calls. I wish I knew. When are you going to get a computer back? Uh, one of these days. I'm getting my car fixed on Saturday. First things first. Yeah, but, but wait a minute. You know, this computer, you have a computer, right? Yes. You just can't get into it. Can't get into it. Yeah. So what you and do is you... Electronic chastity belt on it. I can't get into it. it. This may sound like a bad thing to do because people will take it all wrong, but just drive down the street. Find the first young kid you can find. I mean, yeah, I'm bring in Koreatown, so you know, I'll definitely find someone who can fix it. Bring it back to your apartment and say... Fix my machine. All you have to do, because you say there's nothing on there you really need... All you have to do is just reformat the hard drive and then hey, reinstall the operating system. Well, fly out here and fix it for me, and then we'll, I'll get you lunch and we'll fly you back. Yeah, so. I mean, but you can't find anybody that can do that? That's a simple process. My friend, my friend Warren, who lives on the premises here, too, uh, kind of got us in that zip code, but didn't quite get us back on. So I think he could do it if he had a little more time. Oh, but he doesn't have a little more time? Yeah. Yeah, because you don't have the guilt to put out. Yeah, yeah. So the, no, yeah. no, he didn't charge me nothing. He's my friend, but the, yeah. he kind of knows stuff. He got me free TV, and I'm not yeah. gonna pay cable anymore, yeah. which is nice. So yeah. So you had a gig this month. I had a gig this month. Yeah, so it was a couple of weeks ago, and I did a commercial about a month ago. You did a commercial about a month ago, and this is what for a lawyer. For a lawyer, Anthony Paglia, fine lawyer. You need a lawyer. Call Anthony. Anthony Paglia, injury and, uh, injury lawyer. And the actual video is online. Yeah, you can see it online. But I thought I'd play it here so everybody could see the commercial that you did. Sure, you can hear it. You okay. Can, I don't know if you can see be it. Very, be very, very quiet while we play this. Here we, 
Here, here we go. Imagine this happens to you. You're driving along and someone causes you to be in an accident. Come on, walk and talk with me. Have you had a slip and fall injury? A dog bite? Uh, ow, ow, I'm not the mailman. Have a debilitating head or spinal injury? Or God forbid, a family member suffers a wrongful death? And now you're stuck with these injuries and damages, dealing with the insurance agents and the attorneys getting nowhere? But sir, the accident wasn't even my fault. Good luck proving it, sweetheart! We're paying you nothing, not a bumpkiss! <laughs> you need someone on your side. You need a David to fight your Goliath. All you gotta do is dial. You ready? Call 830 Anthony Paglia, injury lawyer. Uh-oh. Call 830 Okay. Anyway. Beautiful. Yeah. Anyway. With an Oscar, a hoagie, an ogie, whatever they get for commercials. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. It's good. It's good. It's actually, you know what it was that I was impressed by? It's actually a pretty good commercial. It's a good commercial. It's, yeah. There's a zillion lawyer commercials on out here, and uh, th this is the funniest one I've seen. They're all, all the others are the same, so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he looks like a decent enough guy, and it doesn't look like he's a schlock operation, and he... Nah, he's a nice guy. He's a good guy. Yeah. He's a real lawyer. Mm -hmm. She's happening. She's happening. Yeah. So, the way he handles injuries and things like that. Injuries, yes. If you stub your toe, you hurt yourself, whatever, yeah. you get run over. So can I ask oh, you, how much, how much you get paid for that? I got some. I, 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 I'm not gonna say never. Uh, it just a, is, 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 it, is it over a hundred? What is it over a hundred? Might have been. <laughs> Let's just say I couldn't carry that many pennies. Oh, okay, fine, fine. That's good. That's good. Yeah, but at least it's work, you know. And yeah, all it's work. It's gonna be seen out here when they start showing. I think they started showing it already. So. I mean, with all the COVID and everything like that, this is actually work. You know? Yeah, it's work. It's yeah. like, yeah. And I had a gig a couple of weeks ago, and I got another gig. Yeah, I got one in June, and I got another one in July. It, you so. know what's interesting is in this day and age, you go, I got a gig in June, and I have a gig in July. Boy, that's work. I'm working again. <laughs> For me, it's enough. It's enough. It's good. But well, where are you working then? In June, I'm at the Laugh Factory at the Chopper County here in Las Vegas. In July, I'm at the Laugh Factory. Uh, and the Silver Legacy, Silver Legacy Casino up in uh, Reno, yeah. up that way. Oh, really? So you go to Reno for that? I go to Reno. I get my friend Warren to take care of my cats for the week. You know, yeah. I you know I used to live in Reno. Why? <laughs> I used to live in Reno. My first paid radio job was in Reno, Nevada. Well, I've had at K dot K D O T Reno, Nevada. We know about it. Yeah, and it was we did it out of a um, out of a uh, uh, we did it out of Harold's Club. Uh huh. They had their studios in Harold's Club, which was a casino. But I was underage, uh. so, so I used to have to call up, and they used to have two guards lead me to the studio. Oh my god! And if I during the show had to take a leak, I had to call the two guards. And they would stand oh. on either side of the urinal while I took a <laughs> leak. Hold that for you, sir. Yeah, I lasted a very short time there because they figured this was too much trouble just yeah. for some disc jockey, right? I was back when you were 21, kid. Yeah, so then I went back to the Bay Area and I got a job at my local hometown radio oh, station yeah. and the rest the rest is history or mediocrity yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, in fact, on my, uh, on, my, uh, on my Facebook page, my motto is, he used to be a big shot. Ah, there you go. Do you know what movie that's I, from? I used to be somebody. No, I don't know no, what movie no, that's no. from. No, it's from uh, it's from um, uh, the, Roar, the Roaring Twenties. Did you the say Roaring that? Roaring Twenties with Humphrey Bogart and James, James Cagney gets killed at the end. He used to be a big sign. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. The girl, I, my favorite, Colorado, my, whatever my favorite line ever from a movie. It sums up my career completely. Uh, Who is he? He used to be a big. Sh what did he do? He used he to be used a big, to be a big shot. Right. Yeah. yeah, and it looked like he was dying on the steps of St. Patrick's Cathedral, but, yeah. but it really oh, wasn't. I huh? so, oh, I ain't so tough. Oh. <laughs> mercy, is this the end of go, man? Those were in the days when Bogart played bad guys. Oh yeah, yeah. sure. He was a real bad guy in it. 
He played a bad guy in one of his last movies, The Desperate Hours. That was 1955. Oh, you're right. You're right. Him and, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Robert Middleton, the big guy. He was one of my yeah, favorite Desperate actors. Hours. Didn't they take over somebody's house or something? Yeah, in yeah. That? Frederick March and his family. Yeah, yeah. It's probably Frederick about March's a, last film. Yeah, that, that do as I say, sweetheart, or the kid's going to come home and find his mother in a pool of blood. And me smoking Lucky's. I love Lucky's. Lucky's have rich tobacco flavor. Was that, in fact, his last film? No, his last film was The Harder They Come or The Harder They Fall. I forget which one. It was... It was films of each name. One was a reggae film, and one was Bogart's last film. Well, the, the reggae film was uh, the heart of the, the heart of they come. Oh, so then the heart of they fall was the Bogart yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who who okay. started the heart? Who makes the two? Who, hey, who wants to smoke a big spliff with Bogart Street? Huh? Well, Me and the Rockstar and getting it on later. Who started in the uh, in the uh, uh, in the uh, reggae version? The, the reggae that was a Bogart's last film. Uh, no, no, was, no, uh, no, 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 no. Harder they come was the reggae version. Uh, come on, we're jamming, we're jamming with Bogart, sweetheart. No, 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 no. Jamming to a sweetheart. The harder they come was a reggae film, basically. That was a reggae film with Jimmy Cliff. That's what I wanted. Jimmy Cliff, man, Jimmy, and and the reggae accent, the Jamaican accents are so thick they had subtitles for like the honkies that couldn't understand. Actually, the, the actually, Jamaican. when they first released the film, I think in the United States, they uh, they they did add subtitles. Yeah, they had to. They what's could. he saying? Hmm. You know what's he saying? Hey, man, you meet me on the downtown in the church town. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it was a uh, it was a major uh, thing for them. Oh, sure. Yeah. So, anyway. Big oh. thing. Big thing. 35 millimeter. Yeah. Technicolor. Yeah. Uh, but uh, 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 there's another film. I'll tell you another film they had to... They they didn't subtitle. They uh, dubbed. Uh, was a uh, uh, performance. The Mick Jagger film. It was dubbed? Yes, because the accents were so thick. Uh, that's funny. That they dubbed them. And later on in years... Uh, uh, years future okay they finally uh showed the undubbed version and it wasn't uh, bad it wasn't bad it was just you know thick cockney they didn't dub jagger's voice you know what he was saying well no they i did they or didn't they i'm trying to remember but they, speaking voice but they did a lot of they dubbed, dubbed that film so that it could be released in america they didn't think it could be released in america and it was uh, when it was released here it was a phenomenal success yeah you of course with jagger's in it how could it not be it's a great film it's a, it's a really good, good movie. Film. I saw it many years ago. Very weird, strange film about yeah, it. Yeah, strange movie. Really, I liked it. Also, uh, what was it? Goldfinger's dialogue was completely dubbed. Gert uh, Frobe's accent was so thick. Yep. They had to dub out someone else's in it. And also in the next film, Thunderball, which was Aldolfo Celli, an Italian uh -huh. actor, they, oh, had to, uh, they had to dub his voice, too. Oh, really? Largo? I love Largo. Yeah. He's my favorite body girl. I mean, half their problem was having to dub their bad guys. Uh, you know. This is the end of you, Lago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I make money, Penny, but your stretch marks leave me rather flaccid. You didn't watch the Oscars, did you? Fuck no. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What a... Fuck no. An not, a, not a frame of it. What an absolute clusterfuck that was. <laughs> <laughs> did they have it at a train station or something? Or? Well, here's what bothered me. Okay? Chase the homeless people out. Yeah, we're having the Oscars. Here's what bothered me. Usually when they run the in memoriam, which they ran really fast, so you could barely see who died last year. Okay. Yeah. But at the very end, you always make a bet about who's going to be the last one on the in memoriam. Uh -huh. It's always, you know, it's always somebody rather significant. Okay. Uh -huh. So now the last two were Sean Connery and Chadwick Boseman. Chadwick, oh, this is the guy who just the uh, black guy, right? Who just uh, yeah, yeah, died recently. Yeah, yeah, he he, Young guy. he 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 died. I I said it's the two things that a white supremacist likes: a dead black man. So oh, you yeah. know, so he he they're going to go uh, uh, win an award. So so it's the two last people in the montage. Who would you put as the last one? Chadwick Boseman or Sean Connery? Oh, I put Connery without a doubt because I know who he is. <laughs> well, no, more than that, this is a guy who's had a lifetime of of success in the motion mm -hmm. picture industry and and was a a major player, right? Certainly. Chadwick Boseman was a guy who was a, a very good actor, 
uh, who died way too young. Yep. But didn't have the chops behind him. Okay. Yep. So no, he just, yeah. Yeah. Didn't have a resume. So they put Bozeman last. Yeah. You know, and that really pissed I'm me not, off because well, they, he's current and he's young and he's always. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I work for Hollywood. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's. It's terrible the times we live in when we can't have an Oscars that at least is somewhat oh, Oscar worthy. I, I don't even know who these celebrities and stars are anymore. I watch these late night shows like uh, which are horrendous. Like what's his name, Jimmy Fallon? Who I smell warm beer whenever I watch this. Oh, drug. he's horrible. He's, he's horrible. horrendous, and you know, and Kimball's even worse. But the guests are. I don't even know who they are. Tonight's guests are so and so. So and so. But I haven't. I haven't liked Kimmel because he's more traditionally a late night talk show. Yeah, he's, he's deep in, yeah, he never made me laugh at all, man. He's a dead-eyed pud. Yeah, th- I mean, Fallon just plays games with his guests, you know. Uh-huh. It's more like, uh, oh, some kind of game show than it is uh, the yeah, Tonight I Show. Don't, I don't watch Whereas it. Kimmel at least does your traditional late-night show, you know. Yeah. No matter what you think of him, think he's funny or not funny or whatever, I happen to think he does it pretty well. I, he's my favorite uh-huh. out of the bunch. of I can't stand Colbert either. Nah, I don't watch it at all. I don't watch any of them. Zero. What do you do? Do you watch any TV? I have it on, but I don't pay much attention to it. I'm usually on YouTube or playing with the cats or, you know. I do watch you, Do you watch YouTube a lot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm I am, person. like, addicted to YouTube. Oh, no. Everything you want. Anything you want. Music, comedy, speeches, anything you want. Motorcycle accidents, name it. Everything's on YouTube. It's the same guy squeezing his own pimples. It's on YouTube. Yeah, but like the ten things you didn't know about different strokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to see uh, am I having a stroke? Put it on YouTube. And and I'm like uh, I'm like a uh, uh, sucker for that stuff. There you, you know, go. <laughs> if something says stop, you may want to know about this. I'll play yeah. the goddamn thing. How to fix your computer with a hammer and some chocolate syrup? Yes. Yeah. Uh, here's how to fix Stephen Pearl's computer. Yeah, uh, come on over. In fact, if you went on YouTube, you could finally, f- uh, you could probably find out how to fix your problem. Well, I went, I went on it, and I had a couple of things which I tried, and they didn't work. So uh, they have the show up more way over my head. They have this show in England. It's called Grand Design, and it's about people building homes. They decide to, you know, build their own home, and then they do it in their own way. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's spectacular, sometimes it's the most ugly piece of crap you've ever seen. But one guy on this show built his house entirely using YouTube. Yes. In other words, he found he found out how to you know lay lay cement and you know do things like that all by watching YouTube. The entire That's house amazing. was built. Yeah using uh, uh, lessons from YouTube. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, anything you want to know there, there's some answer yeah. to, if you have a question about something technologically, as I do many times, uh, you can find it just by, you know, by going on YouTube. It's amazing. It's amazing. And, and I find a lot of old documentaries, and I find a lot of sure. old music, and I find, oh, sure. you know, so I can go to YouTube and stay there for hours, just just surfing. I, I do it almost every night. I, I sold most of my record collection off, not just to make some money, but everything I have is on YouTube and then some, so I don't need this stuff anymore. Well, take up all the space. That's true. You know. It's insane. I got my record collection in this little phone here. <laughs> my whole record collection. Look, I'm lifting up my whole record collection. Look how strong I am. Yeah, un- until, of course, you, you lose it all on your phone because you forgot the password. Oh God! <laughs> there I go again. There what is a, there, it, there there is a way of getting a password back on your phone. It's very simple. I, I, know. I like to do it without a password. I'm the only one. No, you just it. say lost password, and then they go and then they they give you and they send you a text of a of a of a uh, of a number, and then you just uh-huh. put the number in, and then it allows you to reset your password. So. Well, I've only had four passwords in my life. I used every one of them, and none of them get in. So yeah, I used one password all my life, and all of a sudden, mm-hmm. that password they say has been compromised. Right? I, agree. I don't give a shit. I want my one password. Yeah, yeah, I want this. Yeah. You know why do I need twenty different passwords? They say, well, you know, you do have uh, on your on your uh, browser. It will it will show you what your passwords are. Mm-hmm. And you go, yeah. So what happens if the computer goes bad? Then I've lost yeah. all my passwords. 
So, I mean, I, I would rather have one password and let me take a chance on somebody stealing my identity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas Bubble has said in the, Bubbles has said in the past, uh, um, you know, I don't care if somebody steals my identity. Now they'll have no life. Yeah, no, he has no life, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I just, I just find it uh, having to change my password constantly. Yeah, I, I, I I use the password I've used all these years, only I put a capital at the beginning and an asterisk at the end. Okay? Uh, you know, fuck you. Uh, fuck yeah. you. But That's I mean, my let me fuck be the you. decider if I want to change my password, not you. You know? Yeah. So. No, nope, they decide for you. Yeah. Well, listen, we've run out of time here. And, okay. Uh, you know, a we'll do play. it again in a, in a week or two. Okay. okay, ladies Sounds and gentlemen, good it's the lovely and attractive Stephen. You got it, Pearl. Mm -hmm. Kiss him goodbye. Yeah, kiss him goodbye. That's what you do. Okay. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. How are you? What's happening? Yeah, boy. See this? You know, you get old and, God damn it, you just, everything goes bad. I've got arthritis here in this hand. And I've got to go, I've got to go to a doctor. Uh, because Marjorie says, go and get the shot. Because, you know, they have these shots to put steroid in there. And then all of a sudden, it's good, for, good to go for a couple of years. I had this hand go bad on me once before, and... Now it's on the other side. And um, so I've really got to go. But the shot is, have you ever had one of these shots where they, they like put steroids in there and stuff? Oh, man. Oh, man. Does that hurt or what? Anyway, but I got to go do it. But this stuff, this Voltaren, it does kind of work. Kind of. Kind of. I, you know, so I put some on like that. Wait a minute. Where, where am I? There we go. It's like I'm coming on my hand. And then I uh, rub it in, and uh, it makes it feel better for a little while, you know. Then I might take some ibuprofen that might kill it, you know. Uh, uh, well, that's what happens when you get older, you know. I went out for a walk today, and uh, I, I really am pushing myself, you know, because when, uh, during uh, COVID, uh, we had a tendency to not go out, all right? We stayed indoors. I mean, that's the way we saved our lives. We'd be dead now if we went out. But we didn't go out. And um, so for about a year, I didn't have any exercise at all. Uh, and I wasn't going to get on that, that, that stationary bike because that's just annoying. Anyway. Mm. So I, uh, I, I now decided I better do something, right, and get out there. So I went and I looked at, um, I went out and started walking. And it was really hard the first couple of days. I mean, just, you know, parts of my body that were aching and my bottom of my feet because I've got neuropathy were hurting. And it was just terrible. But then the second day I was walking, things were a little better. And, and now what I do is I make, I take myself on what I call more difficult walks, okay? So uh, yesterday, I walked uh, out into the uh, Harlem Mirror and around it. If you look, I have a video on. And uh, uh, I, 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 you know, I um, uh, walked up a whole bunch of hills to get up there, a bunch of stairs to go up and then down. I didn't go the normal path around. I gave myself some exercise. And then I got down, I made a video. <laughs> And I said, we're here in Golden Gate Park. And I went, wait a minute, that's not right. No, it's, it's Central Park. And I, it was like I was thinking San Francisco, Golden Gate Park. So, you know, and I'm exhausted from having walked up the hills and down the hills, okay, because I didn't take just the path, all right? And today, uh, Jack Bishop is, calls me, and he's talking to me about something. He wants to know how to use Zoom. Oh, that's going to be an upward uh, problem. Anyway, he wants me to teach him how to use Zoom. And uh, in the middle of the conversation, he says, I'm really worried about you because you thought it was 
Golden Gate Park, not Central Park, and you looked exhausted. Well, thank you for just making me feel like crap, Jack. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so today, today what I did, what I did, and, and this, you'll, you'll all be proud of me with this one, okay? I, um, I, I decided to go uh, to the, uh, to, well, go, go west, all right? And uh, then you hit a park called Morningside Park, okay? And then there's this big set of stairs. I mean, not easy stairs, rough stairs. They were rough for me when I, when I had, had been working out and weighed a little less than I do right now, okay? But they were, and they go, when you get to the very top, then you walk a couple of blocks and you're at uh, Columbia University. So I walked up those stairs, and I mean, it was, you know, it was not the easiest thing in the world for me, but I did it. I pushed myself, and then I pushed myself to get to Columbia University, and I pushed myself to come back and go down a bunch of stairs, which at my age is a little more difficult because I don't have the same balance that I had when I was a kid, and so you got to have a handrail. Well, so there, on these stairs going down, some of them don't have handrails. So I had to kind of be very careful about going down. But I got down. Going down was rougher, actually, than going up. That's the strange part about it. But I did all of that. And uh, wait a minute, I'll show, you, I'll show you what I did today. Here we go. Uh, this is uh, my watch. If you can, can you see that? Wait a minute, there we go. See, all the rings are closed. Okay, let me see here. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do this so that you can see it. Oh, well. Yeah. Anyway, um, well, here, I can show you here. I'll show you right here. Anyway, I got it on my phone. Uh, let me see here. Um, hmm. Hmm. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I got a... Wait, what was that message I got? I got a message of some sort? I don't know. I, I, anyway, let me go here to fitness. And here, here's the... Uh, Here's the thing for today. There we go, look at that. Okay, can you see that? Okay, uh, all the rings are, are filled, and uh, then, then you can go here, and I went 1.78 miles, and then it shows here where I walked. Can you see that? Can you see that, everybody? Okay, uh, yeah, see, uh, that's where I walked, so. I'm very proud of that. I managed to pull that off today, which is, you know, better than it was, you know. Uh, anyway, so uh, I thought I'd show you that. Oh, you noticed that there were, you could actually see through it because the green didn't show up. What happened is, see, we have this, this green screen back here. Watch this. See, yeah, that's a green screen. Okay. So uh, when I, but the, the, the thing that showed, the amount that I had walked uh, or exercised is in green, and what, what wasn't there, you couldn't see it. So, anyway, I I do that. I and I like using my watch and seeing how far I've gone and doing some exercise. And you know, I'm you know, I, it's not that I'm feeling better. I'm, in fact, I'm aching right now. So, but but I did it and. Uh, I can't do it tomorrow because tomorrow there's going to be a thunderstorm and I don't want to go out in a thunderstorm, okay? Well, I think maybe it's time for me to talk to the people out there. Uh, we'll go to our, uh, our Zoom panel, okay? And first I have to admit them all. There are only three of them waiting, so, you know, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? There's uh, there's uh there's a, let's see, Charlie is there, and uh, Alan is there, and Trucker Steve is there. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hello. Okay. Hello. Good. Hello. Hello. You're all good. You're good. Um, Does, so, uh, people, do people turn into the show to watch your exercise program? No. Okay. But I, I listen, you know, n nobody watches this. Okay, let me be honest with you. So oh, if yeah. I'm going to do it for grins, I'm going to do it for my grins, okay? Right? On. right? There you, go. you know, and fuck them all. Yeah, there you go. Right? Yeah, fuck them all. What are you talking about? 
By the way, there's Charlene Martinez, and I must thank her because she sent me a very nice gift today, Marjorie and I. Oh. Uh, you know, uh, very, new seat very for your nice. Peloton? Of you. What? A new seat for your Peloton? No, <laughs> not, not a new seat for my Peloton. And it's not a Pelotron, it's a Peloton. Uh, there's a recall and consumer guide for one of those. Oh, you know what it is? It's the treadmill they have. Oh. Because what it's doing is kids are getting stuck under it, and I guess being ground to hamburger or something. Oh, is it Peloton? Works. Yeah, it's Peloton. Well, that's yes, nice. I fucking hate Peloton. Well, no, it, it's don't hate it. I, we got one here. Marjorie Mike Tyson, bought one. Right? Mike Tyson's daughter died from that, right? She was a. Uh, think something happened that she was she got Treadmill. in it, and and yeah, yeah. really, yeah. yeah, she was three or four. Yeah, she got tangled up on a uh, some string on it, hanging off it or something, and it went. She got hooked on there. And she, I, I, I think. Fired. I think the, the, what they've been having four. trouble with are the Peloton, the Peloton, um, uh, uh, what do you call treadmill, it? treadmills, not yes. the, not the bikes. Oh. Oh. You know, the, yeah, the treadmills. The bikes, know. the bikes are you're in danger with the bikes of getting a hemorrhoid. You know? Do you use your bike? Do I use my bike? You know me, don't you? No. <laughs> the answer is no. You lived with me for a short time. Do I look like the kind of person who would spend my time on a Peloton? That's a negative. Yeah. Marjorie, on the other hand, goes on for hours at a time. And I go, yes. I, Come I, on. I go, fine. You pedaled all that amount and you never got anywhere. Yeah. Right? You know. <laughs> yes, Charlene. I got one of those back shots. I can't believe you talked about that. What? It hurt like a motherfucker. <laughs> It was really painful. It went right down my leg, like Wait, my what, left leg. What's this you're talking about? Oh, you said uh, you, you know, want, uh, Marjorie says to get the shot in your hand. You know, oh, the yeah, steroid. Yeah. Oh yeah. I got a steroid shot in my back today. Oh, well, you, you, oh, you did, Charlie too. Boy, they must be making yeah. a fortune off these damn steroid shots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, uh, he, I we mentioned hurting ourselves. I mentioned that I was I had to go get a, maybe one of them. And now I have two, at least two people <clears throat> who've had them within the last couple of days. So are you too, Alan? Yep, in my elbow. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> last Friday. Tennis elbow, huh? Yep, yeah, you know, exactly. I'm, I'm going to go into the business of giving steroid shots. Oh, yeah. it's Bennett's waiting room today again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have Boy's Life, by the way, is one of the magazines here. So if you want to check it out. <laughs> You haven't. They had charged it. my insurance company like two grand, and it took like five minutes. Two grand for a steroid <laughs> shot? Yeah, something like that. You got the wrong insurance. Well, I didn't have to pay it. So oh, I didn't okay. Care. No, because That's he's got he's got to begin with he's got Medicare, right? Yeah. And I then they, then he's got a secondary right. insurance, and between the yep. two, it's all taken care of. Okay. They pay a hundred percent. I'll find that out one of these days. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, we got, we got the secondary insurance that my, the, my wife's business is taken care of, and it just takes care of a hundred percent of everything. It's just, you know, you know what happened? There's a, the, a, a, a Medicare has a deductible every year of about two hundred dollars, something like that. Our insurance is so good, it paid for that deductible. You know, so it was, so we're, we're happy with it. You walk away, you don't pay anything. You know. And then, Whoa. then I'm 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 going to stop getting a, a pharmaceutical insurance because of, uh, of uh, Costco. The Costco mail order is cheaper than my insurance. My copay is with the insurance. You know, so, amazing. You know, yeah, yeah. This is the way to cheat your way around stuff. Whoa. Yeah. You're gonna try that. No, you really should look into it. It, it. it what happened was I went to Costco mail order and they asked you, do you want to use your insurance? Well, if I wanted to use my insurance, it would then be taking out my deductible. But if I didn't go through my insurance, they wouldn't charge me the deductible. And the price of the drugs without the deductible, without using the deductible or anything, at Costco is cheaper than my drugs with the copay. Uh, and the deductible. It's uh, if that makes sense to you. Some of us already heard that. 
know yeah, that from you. I know. We I have talked about it before. I but think it, it's a good thing. But it's my uh, little clue to all of you who have don't have exceed. You know, Marjorie has some exceptional uh, drugs. She has one that she takes every year called Prolia, which is for uh, what is it? It's like for your back or osteoporosis. something. Osteoporosis. Yeah. You know. Um, she doesn't have osteoporosis, but this is to prevent it from happening. So she takes the thing twice a year, and it's very expensive. That mm -hmm. they don't cover at Costco because mm -hmm. you know it doesn't come in a bottle. They can send you, all right. So, but if you if you got normal drugs, you know, it, you check it out. Also, have your doctor give you some hard-on pills. They'll pay for it. They they're really cheap. <laughs> They're that's really going to help the that's going to help the women on the show. That, that's really yeah. it's really cheap at Costco. You know, I I added it up and I figured if I were buying it because my insurance, my pharmaceutical insurance doesn't cover it. This uh, this uh, pill that it's I don't take it for a boner. I take it. Well, that's my excuse. Okay. Anyway, I. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I take it because it, it uh, keeps your prostate small, okay, or whatever. So anyway, uh, uh, else big. If I, I, my insurance won't cover it, okay? Uh, and But if, if I want to buy it, it will cost me $425 a month, which comes out to about $5,000 a year. If I buy um, it from Costco, total price every year. Three hundred dollars? Did I figure something like that? Wow! Just Maybe to keep your prostate shrunk. Hey, listen. Three hundred a year. How many times you get up to pee at night? <laughs> Three, four. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I don't get up to pee at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lucky you. All right. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Brian. How old are you now, Brian? 52, 53, something like that. You haven't figured it out yet? He was adopted. I'm still trying to do the math. Yeah. He's 29. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 50, uh, okay. Uh, are you starting to get up at night to pee a lot? Uh, no, like around uh, 4 or 5. I get up at 5.30 every morning. Okay, so, so, you're, so. Still, you're still within normal range yeah. now. But just, yeah, I've been drinking a lot of water on this yeah. new diet thingy. So another, yes. another 10 years. You'll be getting up four or five times a night. John Larkin, how many times a night do you get up? Um, maybe, depends, maybe once or twice. Oh, really? You know? How old are you? 62. 62? Mm -hmm. yeah, well, That's when it that started for me. Huh? Yeah, I've never, never been four times in a night. That'd be weird, but... Oh, but yeah, maybe, don't worry. Oh, it's been there. Don't, <laughs> don't worry. There. Just, if you get old enough, you're going to have the pleasure yeah, of getting up know. four or five times a night. But there's a way of solving that. And part of that is taking a pill that will uh, uh, sh shrink your prostate, you know. So. Or just get a lot of prostate massages. Well, that <laughs> you could do that. Well, he's in yeah. San Francisco. I'm sure you can find those. Oh, on yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Lar Larkin's got the Santa Claus thing going. You know that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that, yeah. huh? He's he's fast, man. He's fast. Yeah. He's going to be Kevin and the Santa Claus. You should keep that going in December. You could be down at Macy's. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to uh, what happened to Schmoody? She's uh, all we have is her. her yeah, she she could have opened the blinds. Her, 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 yeah. She, yeah, she could have yeah. left open the blinds before view. she left and given us a view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, um, so anybody watch the president tonight? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I figured you would. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you go away like that, you could just open the blinds and we'd have something to look at. <laughs> You know. And then play ambient music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so how you, you saw the president? Yes. Yeah, uh, some of it. Yeah. 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 What I, What'd you think? Anyway, I, I thought it was. I thought it, he hmm. it was great. You know, he, I, I believe all those things. I'm a Democrat, liberal. But what what I really like is watching the pundits. You know, after it's over. And like I was watching the, I, I love to watch the ones on Fox because they're so fucking negative and <laughs> they just lie too. And I just You're love sad. to watch them lie. Did, did yeah. you listen to Tim Scott? Oh, God. Uh, he, he, spoke for, he spoke for the Republicans. He says, I'm not going to be throwing punches here and there and stuff. You can get that on the news. His yeah. first couple, his first minute, everything was cool. And then Trump <clears> was great. 
Biden's a shithead. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? the, first thing, the first thing he said was, uh, Biden seems like a nice man. What the? <laughs> you know what? I, you know what? Mm. I, you know what I said to Marjorie as we were watching it. I said to her, "You know what?" And she said, "What?" I said, "This is boring." I yeah. said, "Isn't that wonderful?" Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, it really, it really was wonderful if you think about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's no drama, and I, you know, I, I just think <coughs> if you want to be a naysayer, okay, go ahead and be a naysayer, but you're doing it to no avail. I mean, what did this guy say tonight that was particularly wrong? You know, he explained everything very nicely, said, here's where the direction we should go if we want to have a better country, if we want to have a more prosperous country. He talked about prosperity, he talked about getting people more, making pe more money for people, and things like that. And so how anybody could find fault with that is amazing. Well, I think they could find fault with, like, how is he going to do it? You know, they have the Republican way to do it and the Democratic way to do it. No, but he, so. no, the, the, no, the, the, no, no, the, Republic, the Republicans have no fucking answer. Well, what to I was going to say yeah. is the Republican way of doing it is not doing it at all. Yeah, go ahead, right. do anything. Yeah. Okay. They just want to talk about fucking culture and ice cream, you know, taking your. And how the election was stolen from them. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, Ke Kevin, who is not here mm -hmm. right now, did send me a. Um, messenger on facebook and it was two pictures he took off his tv screen did you see that he sent it to you too uh, brian yeah, yeah i was, missed that part i missed that part though. i didn't notice it but he certainly did and what that was it? Tom, uh, ted cruz sleeping yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's our senator uh, yeah one of the one of the first things that biden said uh, the, the Democrats are all clapping and Ted Cruz stands up and starts clapping and looks at his hands and stops abruptly. I yeah. think he realized that he was clapping at the wrong thing. He probably oh woke God. up and didn't know what was happening. Oh, yeah. yeah it, it, <laughs> he probably thought Trump was up there again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, uh, I, I just thought, you know, it was dull as hell and that's the way I like my politics now, you know? It, it was the no drama. He did a good job of reading the speech, you know. Except the first, he only stumbled a couple times. Well, he has a stutter, you know, that for years <laughs> he's been fighting and battling and, and has under control most of the time. But yeah. sometimes, if you stutter slightly, you're going to stutter a little more. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. I don't oh, care. He runs the country. I don't. Care. I would rather have a stutterer than a retard like we used to have. <laughs> oh, what a horrible okay. thing to say about Trump. Even though it's true, it's good to hear. You know, we hear little clips here and there about you know taxing the rich more and all that stuff. So it's good to hear all that stuff in that format to really you know hope hope that there's well, going to be pushed on that. Look, uh, you know, I I don't think he hey, listen. Even people who have a lot of money probably don't disagree with him. <laughs> you know, like hey, you know, I'm making good bucks. I got a lot of money, uh, and uh, if I have to pay some of it back. In order to keep making that kind of money, so be it. You know, Mitt Romney wasn't clapping to that. <clears throat> no, he wasn't. But he was clapping at a lot of other stuff, which I thought yeah, was well, nice. He did a couple of times. You know, I, I think Biden played the middle road. He's he was more of a moderate. Well, you see, here's here's the argument that should be made, and it, it's important to make, and that is, shouldn't the people who benefit the most off this country? pay the most in taxes, you know, because certainly they can afford it. Okay, if you tell um, uh, Bill Gates, hey, Bill, uh, I'm going to tax you 38%. Do you think Bill Gates is going to even mind? I mean, do you think he's going to say, oh, well, gee, now I won't be able to buy all that cocaine I like, you know? <laughs> I think the first thing they need to tax is people that are freeloading that are not paying rent anywhere in this country. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Alex. I forgot you just said last night you don't pay rent. I think I should wear the hat again. <laughs> I'm just teasing you, Alex. So. No, don't wear the hat. You know, you know what I'd like to see? Mm. You know what would be a good show? If they took 
the pundits from MSNBC NBC, and the ones from Fox and put them on a show together and just to, just to watch them fucking argue. Well, I'm you know something? That's, that's the way. That's the point. way. That's the way stations like that <laughs> used to be. When I first started out doing talk, when I was at WMCA in New York, I went on before a guy by the name of, of Bob Grant, and Bob was a big, big right winger. Okay, yep. and we got yeah. along great personally. But then, and he was very good at it. In the crossover between the two shows, we'd argue with each other. All right, we'd call each other names, and then you know, but mm -hmm. uh, but we were friends. We really liked each other, and. Um, Stations used to do that. There wasn't the idea that a station had to be nothing but but uh, yeah. right wing, until mm -hmm. a guy came along in a at a company called Clear Channel, which is now oh, iHeartRadio. Yeah. And his philosophy was is that talk radio was right wing talk. The talk radio wasn't left wing talk, and so he did nothing but right wing talkers on his stations. In fact, I went to work for one of his stations. He came into town. I can't, I'm trying to remember his name now. He came into town, and he heard me, and he said to the guy who was the general manager of the station, who happened to be a friend of mine, oddly enough, he said, is he kidding? <laughs> you know, like he couldn't believe my position on things because it was left wing. And I just, I, you know, that always kind of like, uh, that, that whole concept, the talk had to be right wing. I thought it was always better when, you know, if on MSNBC, if they had a right winger on right after the left winger, it'd be more interesting, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I remember the old Dick Cabot show. Yeah. He would, he would bring like, you know, pe people that were, mm -hmm. you know, he would like bring somebody like uh, Jim Brown and some you know, uh, another black activist, and then he'd bring on some, like a racist governor of Georgia. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you who used to, they used to go on together a lot. William Buckley and Gore Vidal. Oh, oh I yeah. love them. I yeah. love them. Yeah. Yep. They, they hated each other. They, yeah. And, and it just, it, I say to people, you know, isn't it more interesting when there's a diversity of opinion in one place? Mm -hmm. So if I were to run a network, one of these networks, I'd have a right-wing host and a left-wing host. There'd be a place for a Tucker Carlson, and there'd be a place for a Rachel Maddow right after him, you know? Or both together, so they, so they could, you oh, know... And a crossover where they could call each other a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, uh, yeah, but, but I mean, but uh, I just, I said, uh, when they stopped doing this, when they stopped having this variety of opinion on talk stations, I said... This is boring, you know. So. Yeah. Anyway, did you hear the uh, speech tonight, uh, Schmoody? Did you hear it? Yeah. Yeah. What did you think? I liked it. I mean, I'm I'm glad he's finally going after corporate America. Well, I you know it isn't a question of going after corporate America. It's a yeah, matter but you know what? Half of them don't pay like what we well, pay. Well, that's the point. You know. Yeah. And 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 quite frankly, they might, you know the trouble is, I mean, I agree with him. A lot of them have offshore accounts, you know. Yeah. They, they, uh, yep. And I'll tell you, some of the biggest companies you do business with, it, you know, a company is terrible that way? This company. Yep. You know, this company is, uh, is, is full-time, uh, like in Europe. They've mm -hmm. got all, a lot of accounts in Europe. And the only thing they have to do in Europe in order to maintain their money in Europe is spend their money in Europe. But that's very easy to do because they just manufacture a lot of their iPhones over there, okay? So, I mean, uh, uh, they do have ways around this. So you've got, we gotta start closing those loopholes too, making it a little more difficult. Well, you know, Apple announced record earnings, but the analysts are thinking they're not gonna do so good in the near term because they're having trouble getting their M1 processors processed or made. Made, yeah. Well, it's so a very, very popular processor now. Yep. Well, it's it's. Well, that that's only that's somewhere. only going to be a minor glitch for them, though. You know. Uh, but I mean, they 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 do um, a crap load of business just for me alone. You know. I've heard I that. Got the watch. I got the. I think, I think all of us have an iPhone on the show, right? Hell no. Oh really? Oh, listen to Miss Naysayer. What what kind of yeah. phone do you have? I just have an LG. An LG. Oh, 
I so do much. nothing on my cell phone, nothing. I read, I have Flipboard, that's about it. Well, I do quite a few things. I masturbate. <laughs> Always good for that. I thought I saw you on Pornhub. Yeah, I also jerk off. That's the other <laughs> thing I do here. Polish the bishop? Yes, right, right. And I talk to friends in the Ukraine about Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. How many of you Poor today? Guy got his how, office raided. How today? many of you today, mm -hmm. when you heard that they raided his office, the yeah. FBI raided and his office, office like, had a big like, smile like, on oh, your face? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like the special thing. It made my fucking. It's wonderful. Yeah. 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 Poor guy. Come on, leave him alone. Jeez, he's had a hell of a year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and don't give him a bad time. He, he has seeds in his prostate that were put there by the same doctor who put mine in. So hey, oh. yeah. he got a Razzie. He got a Razzie award for his performance in uh, the Borat movie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what wow. What was it that uh, Sasha Baron Cohen said in one of the awards he accepted? He said, "I want to thank my co-star Rudy Giuliani." Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hello, Kevin. How are you? I saw. Thank you so much for those two <laughs> lovely pictures of Ted Cruz doing with Ted. <laughs> I mean, that's just rude, you know. And that was that was a second two. <laughs> I, they, uh, I had uh, been watching MSNBC and I was getting pissed off at them because they kept they kept shooting the Democratic side of the room. Mm -hmm. and they were all standing up and cat clapping. They never showed the Republican side of the room. Actually, so I wouldn't pissed I, off. Yeah, I wouldn't blame that on MSNBC because that's what they call a pool feed. I thought they had their own feeds because when I went to um, CNN, it seemed like really? a different feed. Really? Because yes. they usually, I, I agree. They, they usually only have a pool feed because otherwise, if everybody's got their own cameras in there, you got more cameras than you got congressmen. Well, maybe it was just luck or whatever. But I, when they did it there they showed it it seemed like they were showing the republican side a little bit more and that's when <laughs> that's when teddy was sitting there going <laughs> yeah, well i i saw the republican side because they would show romney a lot romney yeah, showed yeah they did show romney a couple of times and he was applauding yeah. that was very nice of him you know for most things not everything not when Donald was just sitting Jackson. there with a scrump on his face a scrump yeah. <laughs> well you can't to begin with it uh, it, it you, I, you had to figure out who was who by the hairdo, because of right. the masks. Okay. Yeah. And Kevin it was it Kevin McCarthy? What's his name? Yeah. Yes, Kevin yeah. McCarthy. Uh, I had to figure him out for a while, but then I noticed the hair, and I said, oh, "Yeah, that's McCarthy." He has a mask. It's like John Wayne Gacy's face. Now the <laughs> now, what do they do? Do they hold a lottery about who could come in and who couldn't come in, or? How did they figure out who was going to be there and not be I, there? I think they just passed out a bunch of tickets and uh, they allocated them to whoever wanted to go, I guess. Yeah. I doubt it. No, no. I think it was whoever more... had COVID shots, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would be one one way of doing it, I guess. I, would say, I, I figured that that's maybe the way they did it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. How many of you are going out without masks lately? Any of you? <laughs> Still, still doing the masks, huh? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I had, I had a guy come over to work uh, on the TV and take a look at it, mm -hmm. and he brought his mask, so we put it on okay. for yeah. us too. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, um, I still, what I'm doing is I'm wearing it walking down the street, but then when there's nobody near me, I pull it down. It made it made climbing these stairs a little easier today because there was nobody else on those stairs, and you know, if you had a mask on, I'd be puffing and huffing for, for, for climbing for, these stairs. Yeah. Now, now, um, um, Kathleen, okay. do you still work out? Yep. Where do you What's go? What's nice is in the basement. There's a full, big, huge contraption, so I get to do back, legs, shoulders, arms, triceps, biceps. Nice. Quads, hamstrings. All so, that how long stuff. do you do on there? I do at least an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then probably another 15, 20 minutes of free weights. Why wow. don't you get a uh, a free program with an LG phone that's got uh, Jack Elaine 
I don't Starbucks do any. You. No, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. Jack O'Lane. You know, I hadn't been to the gym in what, 15 months. Good. Yeah, but you've got all the stuff you need. Well, yeah, but I've only been up here for two months. So <laughs> the last three months, I've dropped 22 pounds. I just want to drop another 10 pounds and then just tone everything up and I'll be good. How did you drop 22 pounds? Uh, pretty much cutting out all sugar, carbs, yeah. and pretty much a plant-based diet and then doing a lot of um, cardio and then uh, lifting weights. I eat very few <laughs> carbs and I lost, I lost about 60 pounds, but I think I've gained another, put 25 back on. But that's been since the operation that I had the you know the the radiation and the uh, right. seeds and stuff, and I think that caused a little bit of it. Uh, well, you've also been cooped up. Yeah, but I also I've been dieting and I'm not losing. You know, well, probably because you needed to walk around. Well, yeah. I'm doing yeah. it Ooh. now, so bodies Good. start reacting. Okay. <laughs> you know. And when you figure it out, Alex, let me know. I've been dieting too, and I'm just sitting around here and I'm not losing, I'm gaining. Well, you know, the problem, the COVID, it doesn't make it easy. Okay. No. You know, um, you know, I mean, I, I have to admit that I probably used to go around more when I get on a subway and go downtown and then do some shopping and walk around <laughs> and have to walk back to the subway and all of that. I would put on a couple of miles. Okay. Uh, but I don't do that anymore. I just purposely go out and walk. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a drudgery. You know, that's not the fun that shopping is, for instance, you know. <laughs> Whatever. Mm -hmm. so. uh, but anyway, uh, it, uh, I, thought, I thought it was a good speech tonight. And I thought that he, he made a good case for why we had to have certain priorities. And... Um, the Republicans are just going to refuse to accept them. I mean, they're going to refuse to uh, to agree with them. But, uh, you know, all he needs to do is get a couple of Republicans on his side and he can get anything passed he wants. That's not possible. You don't think so? You don't think that Romney would, uh, for the right, the right thing, go for it? You know, he's, he could be a swing vote. Possibly. Yeah. You know, yeah, but then again, you got this. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the Democrat, uh, Manu yeah. Manu Mnuchin. Manchin. 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 Mnuchin. I'm thinking of the, Manusha. Uh, 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 <laughs> our, our former Secretary of, uh, of 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 the Treasury. Yeah. Steve yeah. Mnuchin. Did you know what he did before he took that job? on people's houses. Huh. He made a fortune on foreclosing on people's houses. No, you know what his main job was? I what? can't tell you all the movies he's produced. Yeah, what? Huh? Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'll look him up for you, and you will start gasping. Debbie does Dallas. What's Debbie does one? Dallas, yeah. Did he really do that? Steve Mnuchin. I don't know. Steve... <laughs> <laughs> that was a good movie. I, I know he ran a bank that foreclosed on people's houses after the... Uh, the big financial crisis of the, like yeah. around 2009. Yes. Well, let's see this bank that was just foreclosing. Uh, here right we go. Left. Steven Mnuchin. You ready? You ready for some of the movies he's produced? Hold on a second. Here we go. You ready? Yep. How about uh, Wonder Woman? Jeez. Oh, wow. The wow. Lego car? No. Uh, how about uh, Unforgettable? How about the Lego Batman movie? Uh -huh. How about. That was good. How about the accountant, Midnight Man? Uh, let me see here. The Legend of Tarzan. Uh, oh, Batman versus Superman: Dawn of Justice. Oh yeah, wow. big one. He produced that. Uh, <laughs> the Man from Uncle movie they made way back here. Oh, sure. Mad He's Max Fury Road. Yeah. Okay, I'm just naming. I'm just naming the ones you've heard of. Yeah. Not the flops. Uh, but he's been producing movies since 2014. <laughs> so I mean, uh, uh, when I when I saw that one day, I just went, "What?" You know, he produced. <laughs> why did he even get out of that to become Secretary yeah. of the Treasury? What was the advantage? Well, he probably took a huge cut in pay. I would say it's a huge. I would say a huge cut in pay. Absolutely. 
a lot of some, power, some, though. Sometimes producers just raise some money and they get a producer credit. Uh, he was, no. In most, in a lot of cases, they're executive producers. In some yeah. cases, he was actually a producer. Wow. Yeah, well, yeah. Debbie does Dallas. Debbie does Trump. Trump yeah, the, does all the Debbie. ones, all the ones I listed. He was. Uh, let's see here on uh, Wonder Woman. Well, Wonder Woman, he was an executive producer. Yeah, okay. he was in charge of going out and finding the money. You know, uh, yeah, he did executive producer on most of these films. But nevertheless, I mean, that's quite that's quite impressive. Uh, he's been out a couple times. Huh? What were you saying, Trucker Steve? Uh, sorry, I was just talking to my wife. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she just got home from work. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, you know, I mean, um, uh, so he had a, uh, I, I can't figure out why, if he did all those. I mean, as an executive producer, say I'm Wonder Woman, picture made a fortune. Oh, come on. Yeah. His take yeah. had to be pretty good. What did he need being Secretary of the Treasury for? Or the, yeah, you know? Why? And now he's a congressperson. You're a good girl. No, he's not. No, he's not a congressperson. No. What is he? No, he's nothing. Okay. He's back, probably back producing films again. Oh. Yeah. oh okay. Did you see what Larry Kudlow is doing? Yeah, what he was doing before. Yeah, he's back. He's back at Fox doing yeah. doing the, uh, you know, half ass. Uh, Half-assed commentary, uh, uh, business channel bullshit. Well, it was Cudlow and Kramer, and then Kramer went off and did uh, his thing, and I think he was still on. Um, he was on CNBC still, Cudlow, till the yeah. till he be, went, went to the uh, to the White House. And then when he came back, he went to Fox because I don't think wow, CNBC wanted him. Huh? What a change from liberal to conservative. No, he wasn't a liberal though. Oh. He, was no, a, he, was, he he was never uh, liberal, he, but but yeah. he, he was never po really political. He was just business, you know, commentator. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, so, uh, who said they went over and watched uh, Fox tonight? I did. You did. And yeah. what were they saying about the speech? What was their take on it? Well, you know that 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 Brett Hume guy. Yeah. He the most just he just bleh, it was just so bleh, bleh. you know just he goes it was uh, too well, long. Brett, you're, Brett Hume, I keep keep mentioning Brit Hume, everything he says is snide. Yeah, yeah. I know? can't stand it. Well, the guy. I don't think it was very good. Yeah. You know that kind of thing. You know, <laughs> yeah. pejorative. And, yeah, uh, and, and then they had some bimbo that was going on. Oh. <laughs> He, she's going, oh, well, you know, you know, he says, let's, you know, oh, that's all well and great. We can tax everybody that makes more than $400,000 and tax the corporation. But he doesn't tell you about all the the, the family farms that we're going to lose and all the uh, inflation that's going to happen. You know, it's like family farms. There are no family farms. It's all corporate corporations, huge corporations and shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Shit. Family farms, and if, if 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 there are family farmers, <clears throat> they are basically, I, I would say, and to correct me if I'm wrong, uh, they're they're basically sharecroppers at this point. They're just yeah. working for the businesses. And, and then the, the Republicans are are always talking about this estate tax. The estate tax doesn't kick in until you make like more than if you're a, a husband and wife, you you get two million for each person. No, I mean, eleven yes. million for each person. It, it's eleven million. Before, yeah, you got for a couple. You got to got to leave more than twenty-two million to your kids before they even start taxing it. Wow. Yeah, what a bunch of shit like that. <laughs> Come on, who cares? Anybody uh, we got, got two twenty-two people million on the, like that, you know? What? We got two people on the show that might be leaving that type of money to their kids. Oh, I'm not yeah, one because right. I don't have any. Kids. <clears throat> yeah, but who who would? Uh, Brian, of course, he's the CEO or vice CEO of a big corporation. No, what is your what is your what is your title over at the uh, stick your stick your thing in my <laughs> hole? Stick your thing in here, huh? Uh, director of uh, expansion projects for manufacturing. That's that's really exciting. But what does that yeah, mean? 
I'm a director. Da, 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 da. Uh, Simon, yeah. Uh, before before this position, I was in charge of like 500 people when we were growing all the manufacturing, everything. Yeah. When we were building those, so I was in charge of everything. And then uh, now with all the new expansions, they needed my expertise to help that. So that that uh, just uh, we have the new facility, and I have to get all the manufacturing stuff ready for it, all the test equipment, all the equipment training, head count. Wow. Um, I had to buy all the equipment, so I have blank checks. So. Hey. Ooh! Wow! Nice. Good. He's got. He's. 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 He's got to be making good money. Yeah, he's the guy here among us who's working. Yes. You know. <laughs> that and truck, I don't know. I think trucker Steve. Trucker still. Steve is working too. Works his ass off. But I think that's it. I think the rest of us are not. How long are you back home for, Trucker Steve? Are you? Uh, till Sunday. Till Sunday. Hey, hey, trucker did... Steve, I've got a question. How, how far away to your house is a? Uh, Tim Hortons. <laughs> <laughs> Probably uh, down the block. It's about wine, about five minutes away. I just wanted to hear you say about. <laughs> but no, he, he didn't say uh, about. He, he didn't about. say it, boot. He said I about. He didn't say it. <laughs> I don't know what about. kind of Canadian he is, but he didn't say a boot. Yeah. <laughs> He's one five truck. minutes away. Five minutes away. Uh, yeah, and that's a stupid question, John, because if you live in Canada, you you everybody lives within five minutes of a... Tim Hortons. Yeah, I know. Uh, just on the street alone, there's appreciated. Yeah, I'm walking distance from McDonald's, so yeah. Well, there you go. Why has Tim I, Hortons I, I never was tried? Like four on this street. Really? Four? Highbury. It's the wow. main uh, road that goes all the way through London, north and south. And I think there's about four of them. See, we woke him up. Road. You know how you woke him up? Talking about Tim yeah. Hortons. That's, what, uh, that's how you wake a Canadian up. I had breakfast there this morning. Yeah. Oh, there you go. See? Now, how come they've never opened in the United States? I don't think there is a Tim Hortons. Oh, they got some in the States. Do they really? Yeah. Um, there's some in Ohio, um, Michigan, uh, New York State, I think, has a few. Yeah. How many here have heard of uh, Tim Hortons? I've seen one in North Dakota. Yeah. No hockey, you know Hortons. Yeah. My feet are itching. Um, that's why I was leaning over. Uh, sure. Tim Hortons was a hockey player, and if he was, uh, he died in a truck driving accident. If he was still alive, he'd be a billionaire. Oh, really? Oh. That's the estate of Tim Horton or something. Well, I mean, was yeah. Tim Hortons that big while he was still alive, or did it just start while he was still above uh, ground? He opened up a... a Donut shop with his name in partnership with somebody else. Yeah, um, and they used his name as for the business, mm -hmm. and it has grown into the probably the biggest. But how soon uh, after he started that donut shop did he get killed? He died in the early seventies. Uh, really? Oh, that was long ago. A couple of years before I was born. Wow. Uh, I was born in seventy-five. I think he died in seventy. 73 or 72. Wow. Yeah, wow. he was, while well, he was a hockey player, he was a uh, member of the Buffalo Sabres and came home uh, playing after against his former team, Toronto. Mm -hmm. and instead of taking the team bus uh, back to Buffalo, mm -hmm. the game in Toronto, he took it, drove his own car. And he wow. went to the bar after the game and drove home mm. for, uh, back to Buffalo drunk and made it to <clears throat> Athens, which is about, I don't know, a half an hour from Buffalo before the border, mm -hmm. and crashed his car and died. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. And yet his name lives on forever. Yeah. Yeah, I if mean, he was still alive, he'd be a billionaire. Yeah, uh, just did uh, a search, and there's none of them near me in California. Charlene, he's the James Dean of uh, coffee places in Canada, I, I, <laughs> and it reminds me a little of Roy Rogers here. Tucker Steve, are they starting to give out vaccines for COVID up there? Uh, I just signed up uh, to have my appointment. Uh, they're giving out uh, the AstraZeneca at pharmacies. For people 40 and up. Good, good. Uh, 
some people are still nervous about the AstraZeneca because I guess the lady in Quebec just died of a, a blood clot. Yeah, they're having the same problems that Johnson and Johnson had, but you yeah, know, the numbers so are really I'm a low. little nervous about it. Well, um, you're not a woman, so you're okay. Yeah. Um, Everybody, in, all the is all it the, is it one shot or two shots the, for the AstraZeneca? I'm yeah. not sure about that. It's two shots. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Johnson and Johnson's the Johnson's only one the shot. Only one, single shot. Yeah. Uh, but you know the uh, the Johnson. You know the, the fact is that what out of out of seven million? Yeah. There were how many blood Six clots? Million. Huh. Fifteen. 15, something like that? I think the final number is 15 out of 8.6 oh. million Yeah, and, 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 and the 15 weren't all serious. Well, three or four of them died. So I No, don't know I don't think three or four of them died. I only wow. heard one died. I only heard about one. Yeah, I only heard that one died. And if you look at it that way, your chances of dying from this thing is like one in how many million? Even even if all 15 died, your chances are very, very, very small. Yeah. Right. In fact, I'm wondering how many people just die of the flu shot every year. Mm -hmm. You know? I don't know. I, I love yeah. people. I love all these people who are going, I you see them all the time on TV. I'm, I'm not going to get the shot but until they prove that it's not dangerous. Prove yeah. to who? Uh, wait a minute. How many people in America have had it now? 200 million? Uh, isn't that enough of a lab test for you to decide? They, they say that while they're smoking a cigarette and eating pizza. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. true. That's true. And, and, you know, what's more dangerous than... You know, there was a movie, one of my favorite movies of all time, in fact, it was playing on TCM the other day. It's a film called... The uh, the story uh, the uh, Doctor Ehrlich's magic bullet, and it was about this Doctor Ehrlich who invented the whole movie is about the cure for syphilis. Oh. There was a day in Hollywood when they did make films about syphilis. Okay. Really? Wow. <laughs> anyway, wow. what happened was is at the end of the film, the big you know the big dramatic moment, it's Edward G. Robinson, is they put him on <laughs> trial because some guy died from using. His magic bullet. Uh, it was a. I forget what he what he what he shot people up with, but it was something like mercury or something. I don't can't remember what it was, but one person died, so they charged him with murder. And the last his last line in the trial is, and then he wins it. He goes, "There was one death you didn't record," and he said, "What was that death?" And he said, "The death of syphilis itself." Yeah. You know, and, and really that applies here that, you know, how many more people would have died had they not taken the Johnson and Johnson? That's right. So, well, I mean, Trump you know, proved that, right? huh? Trump proved the system that if you don't take it, you're going to die. It, 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 it's much more dangerous not to take it than to take it. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. God, I wish people would get that through their head. And so far as the uh, Pfizer and the uh, and Moderna, I don't think there's been any problems with that in any way. Uh, it's not perfect. Yeah. There, there's going to be things that come up. They say they're now they're 95% effective. You know. Mm -hmm. So, That's the news today. Yeah, but um, you know, I'm yeah. happy with it. I, I think you had yours, right, Schmoody? No. Nope. nope. Why haven't you had them? Because I have it in a week and a half. You asked me last week. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, you know me. I'm, I, I'm just stalling for time till the show's over. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I'll tell you something though. Did you read about Joe Rogan? Do you know yeah. Joe, Joe Rogan is he? That he used to be the host of. Uh, 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 Fear Factor, yes. and uh, a bad comedian, and he somehow he got into podcasting, and for some reason he got a huge audience in podcasting, and then he sold his uh, his company for like a hundred million dollars to Spotify. Spotify. Okay, yeah. now Spotify a few weeks back got rid of somebody who was on Spotify because they were talking against the uh, the vaccine and questioning its efficacy and so on, and saying they wouldn't take it. Guess what Joe Rogan did yesterday or day before Same yesterday? Thing. Same identical thing. And everybody's uh -huh. going, 
Well, Spotify, what are you going to do? You paid $100 million for the guy. You got rid of somebody because they were talking trash about uh, uh, getting the vaccine, and yet Rogan's okay? And they went, well, it's just a different, it's a different story. It's not the same as the other guy. No, it is the same as the other guy, and you're a bunch of fucking hypocrites, as <laughs> I am a fucking hypocrite because this show goes out over Spotify. So, you know. Uh, Did but, you take Spotify off your list? No. No. <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, I think I have. Uh, do I? What do I have? Do I have everybody on Spotify? All the shows? Some of these things I have all the shows, and other ones that I couldn't get all the shows on. And so, what was that? Incoming story. Incoming story. <laughs> Hot off the press. You have hot off the press. Uh, do you have something hot off the press, or am I look just looking for this? Uh, where's my uh, here's my page. Uh, let's see here. I have Spotify at the very top, and let's see if I go to Spotify. Um, yeah, we have Jack Bishop show there. We have mine. I think we have uh, all of them. Yeah, uh, all of our shows are on there. So. Uh, uh, you know, I guess I could get rid of Spotify. Could go tell them to go fuck themselves. <laughs> but, you know, they would just go, oh, we, we stop the presses, everybody. We've got to change our way of doing business. Alex Bennett just took our sh his show off of our, of our system. Yeah. How much money are we going to lose because of that? Yeah. You know, we, we, we can't afford to lose money. We owe all that money to Joe Rogan. Right. And the board of directors will get together and say, who's Alex Bennett? And who's Alex Bennett? Well, you know, I'm, I live in that world where, uh, you know, one time it was, uh, who's Alex Bennett? And then I got a little more popular and it was, uh, hire Alex Bennett. And mm -hmm. then the, uh, uh, then the, the, a little bit while longer as I got better and bigger in the business, they went, get Alex Bennett. All right. And then it was, get me an Alex Bennett type. <laughs> and the final phase of my showbiz career is, who's Alex Bennett? <laughs> yeah, so that's the cycle of life in show business. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, so anyway, everybody was happy tonight with the, with the president. Okay, that's good. It was good. Yeah. Okay. And... Uh, we're all we're, we're all thrilled uh, to hear about Giuliani. We well, just, that that is the bit best news of the day. That's right. Let's just hope it goes up to Trump. You know. They said he was going to come out and make a statement tonight, but I guess he never did, right? Trump. Yeah, he was going to do it on the talk show that he's on or something. I heard the same thing. Oh yeah, he's on a talk show here in New York. It's his own right. talk. And show. he was going to announce it there, but didn't do it. Well, maybe, oh. it, it, I guess he was working on the advice of his lawyer. Oh, wait a minute, he is his lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> and no kidding, huh? But no, I mean, it's amazing. that the, the, What happened this morning, they did it like at 6 in the morning. It was an early morning raid. Is there a reason for that, uh, Alan? Sure, the guy's asleep. Catch him off guard. I don't but know. But here's my question. If you're Rudy Giuliani, and let's say you have some stuff at your place, Okay, about your relationship with the Ukraine. Do you keep it around the house? I wouldn't. I mean, come on. And I'm not even a lawyer. Who knows with him? Yes. I think he has several computers. Yeah. <laughs> you think? No, but I mean, they, they, they took his computers, they took his iPhones. They all electronic instruments. All the electronic stuff, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know what they hope to find, because if I... I mean, I'm not a lawyer, okay? And I'm not Rudy Giuliani. Oh, well, thank God I'm not Rudy thank Giuliani. Thank God, yeah. But thank yeah. God I'm not Rudy Giuliani. Uh, uh, but i got to tell you, if I were him, I wouldn't <clears> keep <throat> any of that stuff on a computer. I would have wiped those drives years ago. What do you think his browser <laughs> history looks like? Ew. Well, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure Pornhub is on there somewhere. You know. Searching on there. Yeah. Yep. Um, 
But then again, I, I've, I've had the same seeds he had, so I don't know why he would need Pornhub at this point. Right. Uh, I've had that. I've had that. So not not the Pornhub, but the the HR has had to talk to me <clears throat> because. One of my one person that is in my group mm -hmm. uh, that they were allocated phones and uh, laptops. And when this laptop got turned in to get refurbished or a new one given out, mm -hmm. um, HR had to come and talk to me because there were some uh, videos that were on there downloaded that were inappropriate. <laughs> and this is this was an Asian HR lady talking to me, and she had to tell me that they were Asian porn. <laughs> what you should have done just for kicks was to say to her, well, could you describe to me what it looked like? <laughs> the soft core, was there, you know, was yeah. it all fuzzed out? Was there what? insertion? Uh, was <laughs> Were there any blowjobs? You talk about embarrass yeah, the HR, and I, I just loved that. Oh, really? And the, uh, I made her have to tell you everything. So. Really? It, does a company go crazy if you turned in your computer and there was some porn on it? Yeah, it, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, it, some uh, companies are on that. Oh, yeah. yeah. They Oof, can get in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Well, you know, why, why? You know, I don't, I don't know. Can't they? Can't they just erase everything on the computer and say, okay, you know? So what is, what, is this somebody yeah. who left the company? Oh, they're gone now. But, but yeah, they're gone now. But at, this is during the time. No, no, they didn't leave the company. They were exchanging it for an upgrade. Oh, and I so, see. So, so IT goes through the computer, and they happen to see that. So what did HR do to the person for having porn on their computer? Uh, he had an explanation, and then the, uh, that was that. There what was, was what a, was the? Ex I'd uh, love to hear what the explanation was. Oh, my, my wife, girlfriend. Uh, He's an old. He's an older gentleman. He had a younger Asian wife from Philippines, and he was just showing her some stuff, and it happened to be on the wrong computer, and blah blah blah. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I, I I was very listening. He very didn't attentive. use the "I was doing research" excuse. <laughs> it was just a time. It was oh, shopping for his wife. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. On Kevin, you've been Ken, <laughs> Kevin, you've been kind of quiet tonight. Any any comments uh, about the president or anything like that? Yeah, I think he did a good job. Although I didn't hear anything on immigration, I did miss part of it. So I don't know. Did he talk about immigration at all? I, yes. I, what did he say? Because I I left by that time. Um, you know, he says that we need to. We've been fighting with it for forty years, and we need to resolve it. Well, I think he's right. It, I think it's about time that it was, you know, there was a resolution of some sort, you know. Right. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's. by the way, if you get a chance, on uh, PBS Frontline, mm -hmm. there is a two-part documentary on uh, the COVID year of, of COVID around the world. Did you see this, Charlie? Yeah, mm -hmm. I watched this, the second part tonight. It was very good. It was What's very it good. Yeah. It, uh, I, I can't remember the name of it. It's uh, on Frontline. But it's on Frontlines. It's two okay. episodes. It was last somewhere. week's show and this week's show is part two. Yeah, <laughs> and it was it was really terrific. I mean, you really saw it everywhere in the world. In India, in some <clears throat> tribal uh, haunts down in South America, you know, in the Amazon, uh, who were yeah. being caught with it. And it's just really, really an amazing, uh, amazing documentary. Uh, but uh, just go to Frontline and you'll you'll find it there. Hey, listen, there's the music, folks. I think I'm going to start wearing my hat again. What do you think, Schmoody? Why? It's a good point. Why? Yeah. Actually, it's not a full I, moon in New York every night. That's why. That, well, you know, you know what we got? We got we had a what, what do they call a huge moon when it's the closest to the yeah. Earth. Yeah. <laughs> Pink moon in California. Pink. Moon, yeah. I didn't yeah. see it. Last night it didn't look pink to me. Well, pink moon, that's something HR will have to take up with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, hey, uh, Alan, thank you. Thank you, Trucker Steve. Uh, go get a donut at Tim Hortons. Uh, Charlie oh, Wallace, awesome. thank right. you. Thank you to the lovely and <clears throat> attractive Brian Neary. Charlene, thank you, and thank you so much for the gift you sent us. We really appreciate it. Oh, you're it. welcome, Alex. Uh, you deserve a gift. <laughs> oh. Jeff, thank you. Thank you, Schmoody. Always nice to you're see welcome. you there. You're always nice to have you here, and it's something for you to do now up there in Guala. It's a call this program. 
Yes. And, yeah. And and also John Larkin and, and uh, Kevin, my old pal Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it, everybody. Why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. There we go. There they go. And uh, they're finished for tonight. And uh, uh, Jack Bishop is next with the intersection. You can call him using Skype with the... Uh, address being gabnet live gabnet live will get you right to his program i'll see you again tomorrow night what time of course same time 10 30 eastern daylight time same time same station in life in the meantime as always if you see her tell her i love her and by the way wear a mask get vaccinated and stay safe out there will you please i need all the listeners i can get 